Hey guys, Ivan here, and first, in this video, we're gonna talk about uh, this uh, this guy, this bodybuilder, I guess we can call him a bodybuilder, I mean, he competed at, uh, at the biggest amateur bodybuilding show in the world, so I guess he is a bodybuilder, right? I don't know, I, it's confusing, because he doesn't look like a bodybuilder at all. I guess it's a philosophical question, <laughs> by the way guys, I hope you like the new intro Old School Labs video. Anyways, uh, this guy right here, his name is Frederick Hurt, you won't find him on Instagram, so don't even try, but he has a Twitter account, so there isn't a lot of photos, there isn't a lot of information about this guy, other than he actually has been competing for a long time, for more than 10 years, and every time he competed he looked like this. I'm sure you guys already know about this, because a lot of YouTubers made videos about him, but I don't think anybody was really, like, really honest with their assessment. So, to say that this guy was not in shape is definitely an understatement. I'm just curious, what is his uh, thought process? I'm really curious what he thinks. I would really love for this guy to actually do an interview at one of the bigger channels and actually say what he thinks. Like, there are a couple of options. So, maybe he is delusional. He believes that he's in shape while he's uh, absolutely not. And not in shape is an understatement, that's for sure. The other option would be that he is, he, he is thinking like, yeah, maybe I'm out of shape, maybe I'm a little bit, uh, maybe I'm a little bit uh, <laughs> spilled over, uh, but uh, I'm big enough. And he is, he does have a lot of muscle, he's a big dude. And he thinks maybe maybe the mass will, you know, help me beat some of the guys. I don't know. Maybe he's thinking that way. And maybe there's a third option. He just likes to compete. He is aware of what he looks like. And then that option leaves us with two more options. One would be that he likes the way he looks. He's aware of his look, but he likes it. It's different, but he likes to think that this is... This is good for bodybuilding, maybe he has different standards. And then the other would be that he is not able to get shredded. To to get shredded, listen to me. To get in, to, 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 to look, to, to lower his body fat percent. Let's just say that. Uh, maybe he has a health condition, or at least he, he, he thinks that he has a health condition. Or he's just simply lazy, he likes to eat a lot, and he doesn't want to diet. And he just wants to compete, he likes to pose, he likes bodybuilding. And that's why he does it. Which one it is out of all these options, or is it something else? I don't know. I would like to hear what you guys think. And I would like to hear this guy, actually. I hope he will do an interview. I hope somebody will get him on their show and that he will actually say what was on his mind doing the biggest amateur bodybuilding show in the world against some of the really, really good guys. One of them became a professional bodybuilder that night. Uh, looking like this, I mean, what the hell was he thinking about? This is disrespectful to bodybuilding stage, for sure. So I'm being a little bit brutally honest, yeah, but I'm just being honest. And this is bodybuilding. When you step on a stage, you need to be ready to be criticized. And that's what my job as a bodybuilding critic, let's call it that, is. And I'm just being honest, whatever you guys think about this guy... Whatever you think was going through his mind, whatever was his idea of whatever he was planning or whatever he was doing, tell me, what do you think? Tell me in the comment section down below. Alright, Frederick Hurt is definitely not gonna be doing this show because he didn't win his class and the overall, he didn't get a pro card, unfortunately, maybe next year. Uh, Dubai Pro is the new show happening uh, 2022, posted by Oxygen Gyms. And uh, they said this is going to be the biggest show in the Middle East. And these guys, you know what, they have a lot of money. And this is not going to be a joke. This is going to be probably one of the biggest shows in the world. And it's happening right after the Mr. Olympia. So a lot of Olympians will compete. I'm sure the prize money will be huge because these guys are swimming in money. And for example, Oxygen Gym, Kuwait, Oxygen Gym in Kuwait, it's one of the biggest and the best gyms, if not the best gym in the world. It's ridiculous what that gym is like. I'm planning on visiting it next year, but you guys probably saw the videos. It's just insane. And you guys know how much money Badr Budai has and that he invested in all these bodybuilders. When they go over there to train, they have everything covered. So these guys are, are swimming in money. And this show, I just cannot imagine it being 
poor. <laughs> it's going to be a rich show. It's going to be an amazing show. Uh, I hope the organization will be uh, done properly as well. So we're going to have Mr. Olympia. Maybe Atlantican. I think Atlantican is going to happen next year as well. Uh, Arnold Classic 2022 is going to be huge, but that's in uh, it's in spring. But in the fall, right after Mr. Olympia and Atlanticon is going to be at the same time, we're going to have Dubai Pro. And this seems like it's going to be a huge show. I don't have any more information. I don't think any information was put out there. As soon as I get any more info, I will inform you guys. So stay tuned, subscribe to this channel. All right, so we have a physique update of... Uh, Jordan Peters. Now, Jordan Peters, he's not a professional bodybuilder, and maybe some of you don't even know who he is. But I'm sure most of you do, because this guy is very popular. He has a lot of followers. He has a great, one of the biggest, I think it's the biggest subscription website about bodybuilding on the internet. And uh, also, I would say that he's one of the biggest bodybuilders in the world, pound for pound. The amount of muscle this guy is carrying on his small frame is just ridiculous. He doesn't have the best structure, though, to become a professional bodybuilder, but uh, he has a lot of muscle. And now he's back on gear. So he was cruising for a while, and he says, uh, I'm eight days back on a semi-proper cycle. I added 700 mg of Primo, uh, a week on top of my 100 to 150 grams of, uh, milligrams of test a week. So he was on uh, only 100 to 150 mg, mg of test, uh, a week for a while and he maintained a lot of muscle and he says uh, i have been running the low for a long time so things change fast when your body is ready to respond and then he talks about um, people who didn't believe that he was uh, on that low uh, now he's showing us that, <laughs> that he looks crazy when he actually does more and definitely the difference is big. I was following this guy. I don't know if you guys follow him, but the change in only eight days is ridiculous. And also his strength, I guess, is going to go up, as he says, which is really hard to believe because he's incredibly strong. Uh, the next slide, I'm not going to show it to you, but he tore a adductor. And this guy tears muscle every, like, couple of months. He had so many tears. It's just, it's funny. And he's, he's like, used to it. He doesn't even care. He hurts himself, as he writes here, you can read, and he gets fixed easily. He, he knows how to rehab, so he, he has been through it so many times, he can recover from any kind of tear rather easily. It doesn't really set him back too much. And what's very interesting is that he has this kind of training approach. He trains like an absolute maniac, and he knows that there is always a risk of injury. Risk is putting it mildly. There is a certainty <laughs> that he will injure himself. Based on his previous performance, based on stats, he's always he always gets injured. Every couple of months, he has a he has a tear, and he keeps training that way. Isn't that ridiculous? Isn't that crazy? He loves training hard so much that he doesn't even care if he's going to tear something. And when he tears something, he 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 screams loudly because that hurts. I didn't have any big tears before. I had some minor ones, but I know it hurts. And I can't imagine what a big, like, like serious tear feels like. It must be, it must be crazy painful. And he doesn't care. He likes to train the way he trains. It brings him results. And he keeps tearing muscles every couple of months. <laughs> crazy mindset, right? All right, next we have an update of a classic bodybuilder, Terence Ruffin, classic physique competitor, uh, runner-up at the Mr. Olympia, who is preparing for the Arnold Classic. Now, what I found interesting here is the caption. He says, uh, so the prep is officially underway again for the 2022 Arnold Sports, and this year I'll be facing off uh, with all manner of beasts, swans, bears, and even dinosaurs. And he is referring to... When he says swans, he means Brion Ainsley, because his nickname is uh, the Black Swan. When he talks about bears, he thinks about the Urs Kalinski, that's his last name, uh, who was fourth at the Mr. Olympia, and uh, even dinosaurs, that's uh, Ramon Dino, Dino. And we have another update of him as well, I'm gonna show that to you in a second. So he says he's excited, and that uh, basically he's going to win, like he won before. He is confident, and uh, I think he has a good chance. I think he is the best bodybuilder. Uh, he, he's the best classic bodybuilder right after uh, Chris Bumstead. But these other two guys, you know, they, they have a good chance of beating him because they are taller. 
Anyways, uh, Terence here looks great, looks in great shape for how many, 10 weeks out, something like that, 11, 10 weeks. So in that time, he's going to get way more shredded. And now with the added motivation, $60,000, you know, and also defending his title, I'm sure he's going to be hella motivated and that he's going to bring probably his best ever. And I'm sure he made progress in the meantime. I'm sure he is making progress because he is training like a maniac. This guy is really known for heavy training. He has a coach who is, you know, Joe Bennett, hypertrophy coach. These guys are training very, very smart and very, very hard. The right way, let's just put it that way. So he has a good, uh, good team behind him and I expect him to win this Arnold Classic, yeah. But can Ramon Dino beat him? Here's an update of his. Um, he's doing a vacuum. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's photo is behind him. His arms are looking pretty big and full. He's known for that. The vacuum looks pretty deep. Overall, he looks uh, pretty aesthetic. Uh, I wouldn't say... I mean, this is not the same photo like, uh, like Terrence, but I'm not impressed with his physique as much as I am with Terrence's, honestly. Yeah, I like this guy because he's tall. He has big arms, unlike Terrence. Terrence is short, blocky. He has small arms. This guy is wide and tall and he has big frame, big arms. So it's kind of, you know, it's my pre preferred look. But I still think Terrence is much better. Maybe this guy makes improvements and he actually beats Terrence and wins the Arnold Classic. Maybe it's going to be the same at the Mr. Olympia, as it was at the Mr. Olympia. Maybe Terrence is going to win, Brion is going to be second, uh, Ors is going to be third and this guy is going to be fourth. Same as it was at the, at the Mr. Olympia. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, I know this guy has a lot of fans from Brazil and whenever somebody said something uh, bad about him, they attacked everybody so I hope I didn't offend him somehow uh, in my opinion, he is not as good as the other guys uh, he wasn't at the Mr. Olympia, maybe he will improve his last show that he did, he looked great I don't know if the other guys are going to improve I think Terrence is going to improve, I don't know if Brion is going to improve I'm guessing Brion is going to come the same, probably, or worse I don't know about the Ors guy, but as for now, this guy, you know, he has a chance of winning. He has a chance of beating everybody else. I'm not saying he doesn't. I just wouldn't bet on him. I would bet, best case scenario for him to be second, after Terrence. I can see him beating Ors, I can see him beating Brian, but beating Terrence, that's gonna be a challenge. Anyways, guys, tell me what do you think about Ramon Dino. Are you from Brazil? If you are, I'm sure you'll love him. And you're going to hate me for not saying he's going to win the Arnold Classic. But if you're not, tell me your objective opinion. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this whole video, like it. And whatever is on your mind, tell me in the comment section down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it once again. And thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.